The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the border of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the street and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not sail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So, so Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his head. The word of the Lord. This 19th Sunday after Pentecost 2022, the word comes to us from Genesis chapter 32, what to do with a promise in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. After a long day of travel, Jacob stopped and rested, and he found a stone to put under his head to serve as some sort of pillow, I guess. Uh, Jacob was not a man of 2022. Uh, so Jacob rests there in the night after a long day's journey, and he dreams during that long night of a ladder extending from heaven down to earth with the angels of God ascending and descending upon the ladder. At the top of the ladder is the Lord God himself, who has a word for Jacob. Behold, I am with you, God says, and I will keep you wherever you go, Jacob. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. This is a promise from God. A promise that God would have Jacob's back. A promise that God would not let him out of his sight. A, a promise that God would guide him through this world and this life. And finally, a declaration from God that he always keeps his promises. Fast forward, and sometime later, we find Jacob is married, he has kids, and um, he's on the move again when he gets word that his brother Esau is in the area. Esau was out for vengeance. Jacob knew it. So we read that uh, in, in Genesis there that Jacob was, was fearful and, and greatly distressed. He was afraid his family would all be wiped out. He was afraid that it was all going to end like this, with Esau hunting him down. The worst of everything was continually running through his head nonstop. Ever been there? The worst of everything running through your head? Yeah, I've been there too. So Jacob takes steps at night to get his family uh, to safety. Uh, he does this by cover of night. He moves them across the river. And after he moves them out of the area, he finds himself at night by himself. Now when things are not going well as they were with Jacob, nighttime is the worst time. There's an old German proverb that says, the night is no man's friend. Now for us in 2022, nighttime, when things are going bad for us, is still hard, but we have lights that we can turn on. We have TVs to distract us. We have all sorts of things that make the night a little less threatening. But not for Jacob. With his family safely across the river and out of harm's way, he just sat there in the darkness. Have you ever sat in the forest by yourself when it was dark? No flashlight. Jacob had no flashlight. There was no fire that he could uh, 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 set because you know, that would expose his position to his brother. Nothing. Only the night sky and the sounds of darkness. And of course, in that situation, that only compounds the fear and the distress and the trial of the whole thing. What happens next is one of the most obscure passages of the whole Old Testament. 
It's eerie what happens in our lesson from Genesis this morning. God comes in the flesh. Not an angel, not an apparition, not Jacob's imagination, not a dream, but God comes in the flesh. God comes in the flesh and he takes hold of Jacob and he forces him to the ground. He wrestles with him. It's in this situation that we learn what to do with a promise. Now I want you to remember this lesson from, from Genesis. Because one day you too will find yourself in the dead of the night, in distress and burdened. That's just a fact of life in this broken and dark world. In the middle of the night, God comes in the flesh. He wrestles with Jacob. It's rough. But Jacob does something very curious that we can all learn from in this 32nd chapter of Genesis. Jacob remembers the promise that God gave to him previously. Jacob uh, seeks to have this promise reposted into his ears in this time. He demands it from God that this promise that you first gave me, God, I want it again. Give it to me now. And of course, you're all squirming in your pews right now because isn't that kind of blasphemous to make a demand of God? I mean, who are we to make demands of God, right? And Jacob says, yes, that's, you're right. But I want my promise and I want it one more time. How can he do that? God made a promise to Jacob to keep him, to watch over him, to bless him. God doesn't lie. God makes a promise. He keeps his promises. In fact, God says that himself. Now, when God makes a promise to us, this is what we know. We know it's a lock, right? God speaks and it comes to be. God makes a promise to Jacob, and what does Jacob do? He holds God to his promise. In fact, he won't let go until he gets that promise again in his ears. Faith always holds stubbornly to a promise from God. What does God in the flesh do when when reminded by Jacob who won't let go? Jacob holds God to his promise. What does God do then? He reposts the promise and blesses Jacob. So what do you do with the promise then? Well, you use it as a Christian. You use it. You speak it back to God. Dear Lord, you promised me. You know what else? You mock the devil with it. When temptation comes your way, when despair is in your midst, you mock the devil with God's promise. You hold fast to that promise of God. And one of these days, you're going to find yourself in the dark of the night. You might be afraid. You can't sleep. All of that. You know know what I'm talking about. This is the time when you especially remember that God has given to you a sure and certain word of promise. Jesus. Jesus, have mercy on me in the midst of the darkness. Jesus, you promised me that you would have me all the way because you know that he keeps his promises and so Jesus who blessed Jacob that's how we have to go with this Jesus who blessed Jacob has blessed you all of you with a sure and certain promise this promise has been given to you in the gospel that's been put into your ears whoever has been baptized and believes will be saved there's a promise from Jesus. Whoever is, believes and is baptized will be saved. It's a promise from Jesus, and you hold on to that. You can even take some water and splash it on your forehead in the midst of trial and the dark night of the soul. What else? What else does Jesus promise to you? It is finished, he cries, from the cross. When those sins are haunting you, when you're afraid of 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 death or or something in the dark of the night. 
It is finished, Jesus says. Your sins are finished. Death is finished. Your salvation has been accomplished. What else? I am with you to the end of the age, Jesus says, after His resurrection in the flesh. When you're alone in the darkness, when it seems like everyone else in the world is sleeping peacefully, and you're the only person up at that time, and you're running 10,000 things through your head, and you're afraid, and you're worried about life, and you're worried about your job and your family. I am with you to the end of the age, Jesus promises. You know and I know that when you get a promise from the Lord, there is absolute certainty with it. He cannot lie. He does not break His word to you. These are not just empty words, but a word of promise that is, as Scripture tells us, powerful and brings to us certainty. And when you're in the dark of the night and the world seems completely uncertain, Things are unraveling in your life or in the world and you're worried. You go back to those promises and they bring certainty. So what comes from that certainty? Because you have this promise of Jesus. What comes from that? A fighting faith. A fighting faith. A fighting faith is a faith that is absolutely certain and confident in God's word of promise to you. And so we use these promises of our Lord. We fight back. We fight back against the fear and the trials and the darkness. And it goes like this. I'm a Christian. Whatever you're afraid of, declare it to Him. I'm a Christian. I belong to Jesus. I've been baptized in the blood of God's Son. I've been fed with the body and blood of Christ and it is in these things that I hold firmly to. It is in these things. And in the midst of all the chaos and uncertainty of the world, it is in holding to these things that I have peace. Even if God Himself were to speak otherwise, I'm at peace because I have His promise and He keeps His promises. So do not be afraid, dear Christians. Do not meekly sit in the darkness cowering when that stuff comes. Use those promises of the Lord and take comfort. Be at peace. The promise of salvation in Jesus is yours. To the glory of Jesus' name, amen.